Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to the Slump Busters Fantasy Football Podcast Championship Edition. Whether you're playing for money or pride this weekend, we got you covered. Let's get into our show. and gentlemen just like that we are almost done with this season if you're like me i'm in the semis in two of my three leagues so let's go there unfortunately my chargers put up a big freaking egg today that wasn't a pretty game i have a chance in both of my league it's not over just yet we're waiting until uh tomorrow those are i hate monday night games i just it just prolongs your agony or your glee for a whole extra day. It's terrible. If I do win this week with the seedings and everything, it'll be me versus my mother in the championship game. And you know, I can't let her beat me because she just, man, she talks so much shit. Like, right? It's ridiculous how much shit she talks for only being her second season. And I mean, I got to give it to her, though. She she manages a great team. If you listen to some of my family, though, they'll say I manage a great team because they say I run her team. But no, it's all her. It's all her. She drafted. She traded. She picked up. She It's all her. So congratulations to her on making it to the championship round. Hopefully my roommate. I have commissioner power, so maybe that player, Zach Pascal, that he has tomorrow, you know, maybe gets kicked off of his team this week. You know, maybe. We'll see. Uh, I told him if he beat me this week, he has to find a new place to live. And if I beat him, he could still live here. So (laughs) we'll see how that goes. But enough about the fantasy or my fantasy. Let's get into this fantasy. Let's make sure you guys know what you're getting into for next week. If you're on, you know, in that championship game, or if you're for that third place game, two playoff leagues that I'm in, you get a prize for third place. So hopefully if you lost this week, you still get a chance to win some sort of money or some sort of, you know, whatever you guys are playing for in your league. But let's get into this week's games. Let's break them down. Let's look at ahead of next week as well. And hopefully we can win you that championship. First game we'll look at, Lamar Jackson. This guy either ruined your fantasy day because I played against him, or he won you your fantasy week because he killed it. So New York went to Baltimore and got utterly destroyed. 21-42. It looks closer than it actually was on the field. On the field product was complete and utter destruction of the Jets. Sam Darnold, 218, two touchdowns, one interception. He gets uh, Pittsburgh next week. I'm not really liking that matchup. Pittsburgh is number one in sack and number one in takeaways. He doesn't really have a lot of weapons. So I'm going to slide him in as a QB2 next week. Le'Veon Bell, 87 yards, no touchdowns, added two catches for one yard. So it's, again, I don't like the matchup. I'll slide him in as a a low-end RB2, high-end RB3. Jameson Crowder, six catches, 90 yards, and two touchdowns. Don't expect that again this week. But PPR, I can see him getting a lot of catches underneath. In PPR, I can see him you know, getting a lot of catches up underneath. So PPR, he's a bigger play than he is in standard leagues. I'm going to slide him in as a wide receiver three. Robbie Anderson, four catches, 66 yards. He did have a two-point conversion, which was nice. However, next week, again, he's just going to be more of a boomer bust wide receiver four. On the Baltimore side, Lamar Jackson, 212 through the air, five touchdowns, added eight carries for 86 yards. No interceptions, which was nice. Uh, no rushing touchdowns. 
touchdowns, but that's because he had five passing touchdowns. Next week, they do get Cleveland, so I can see he's still going to be a QB1, start it and forget it type of guy. Ingram, 76 yards on the ground, one touchdown. He added one catch for 10 yards and a touchdown there as well. The only bad part is he keeps getting his usage taken away by Lamar Jackson, but uh, he's still going to be a high-end running back too just because this offense they're a running offense in order to set up Lamar Jackson you do have to run the ball so there's that as well and then Mark Andrews four catches 52 yards and a touchdown he's still going to be a tight end one next week now to Spygate 2.0. If you haven't seen the video, this is not related to fantasy at all, but if you have not seen the video, it has been leaked of the Patriots sideline recordings of Cincinnati. Uh, it's pretty damning. It's literally just their sideline. Like it, It's Spygate 2.0, but why would you record a 1 and was it 1 in 15 or 1 in 13 team? Like, come on, really? But it does raise questions. If they were recording Cincinnati, who else were they recording? But nonetheless, they did win this one 34-13. At the very beginning of the game, there was a point where it was 10-10. And I was like, did you really record them? Because you guys suck right now. If you recorded a team, yeah, better beat them. And then they ended up pulling away, you know, in the second half. But Brady still looked very pedestrian. 128 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. I'm going to put him as a QB2 next week. They do get Buffalo. Buffalo has a pretty stout defense. If you remember, Buffalo held them to 16 points uh, last time they played. And if Josh Allen would have been in that game, they probably would have lost that game. Sonny Michel, uh, 19 carries, 89 yards, no touchdowns, one catch for 14 yards. So he finally emerged, but I expect him to go back down next week. I expect White and Burkhead to carry more of the fantasy points. White, three carries, 13 yards, no touchdowns, added three catches for 49 yards and a touchdown. He pretty much did all of his damage in the first half. And then the second half, he was out of there but I still like White he's still the best player in this backfield he's the most reliable of this backfield if you can consider somebody reliable because Belichick absolutely hates fantasy football hates it Burkhead six carries 53 yards and a touchdown and added two catch two catches for six yards Edelman had a terrible game he had two catches for nine yards so he definitely killed your fantasy week this week but next week of course it's Edelman I could see him having a little bit better of a game he's really their most reliable receiver um, Nikhil Harry is starting to come along I also have Jacoby Myers but I still like Edelman the best I'll slide him in as a wide receiver too as for the running backs Michelle is going to be a boomer bust four white is probably going to be a low end two high end three Burkhead's going to be a mid-range three on the Cincinnati side Dalton 151 one touchdown four interceptions he's going to be a QB two they get Miami next week so I could see him having QB one potential they also might get AJ Green back so that's a hell of a deal for them if he can get them if he can get him back Joe Mixon 25 carries 136 on the ground no touchdowns had three catches for 20 yards he's shaping up to be more of a rb1 next week he's been in the rb1 conversation this last couple weeks where he was almost an afterthought towards the early to middle part of the season and then receiver wise eifert was the one that led the team in receiving i don't really trust any of these other receivers but if you do get aj green back he might be worth the flyer you never know hasn't played all season but aj green and andy dalton have a connection. Andy Dalton has the most touchdown passes to AJ Green and the most interceptions when targeting AJ Green. So just be aware of that. Next, we'll travel to Tennessee, uh, where Houston beat the Titans 24 to 21. Sean Watson had a pretty solid day 243, two touchdowns, two interceptions, added seven carries for 32 yards. He's still going to be a QB1. Carlos Hyde, 26 carries, 104 yards with the touchdown. Now he gets Tampa Bay's stout run defense. They're one of the better run defenses in the league, but they're a terrible passing team. Last couple of weeks, the only touchdowns that they have given up on the ground have been goal line carries. It hasn't been 30, 40 yards out, whatever it is. So it's those, those just real short, quick runs. So he might be able to get a goal line work, 
but I expect the yardage for him to be pretty uh, low. So I'm going to slide him in as a RB2. Hopkins definitely going to be an RB1 next week, especially against Tampa Bay's secondary, which is pretty bad. They're just not very good on that side of the ball or on that part of the defense. Hopkins this week, six catches, 119 yards, and no touchdowns. Will Fuller, five catches, 61 yards. He's going to be a boomer bust wide receiver three Kenny Stills three catches 34 yards two touchdowns he's going to be a wide receiver four with boom potential as well he's going to be the same as Will Fuller now on the Tennessee Titans side Tannehill 279 through the air two touchdowns one interception added three carries for 10 yards and a touchdown he's still going to be a one next week even though they get New Orleans since he's came in in relief of Mariota he's been phenomenal he's been killing it so fire him up next week Derrick Henry 21 carries 86 yards volume still there the yards total not so much they went more damage through the air and he got his goal line carries stuffed uh, he did have a chance I believe it like four or five goal line carries and was stuffed on all of them so he could have had a better day it's all there for him he's going to be a running back one as well AJ Brown is going to be a high-end wide receiver two this week eight catches 114 yards and a touchdown and now we'll go to the snow bowl I always love these snow games unfortunately living here in New Mexico. Uh, we never really got to play in any crazy weather football games. It was always pretty clear day, whether it was either cloudy or sunny, but the weather was always pretty clear. So I didn't never, never really got to play in any of these crazy weather games. I really wish I could have because it would have been so much fun because we practice in it, but never got to play. But so I'm always, you know, I'm always sad when I see these games because I'm like, damn, that would be so cool to play in. And I never got to experience it. But Denver lost Lost this one to Kansas City, 3-23. to Drew Locks looks pretty good in the snow. 208 passing yards, no touchdowns, uh, one interception. Lindsey, 7 carries, 32 yards. Freeman, 5 carries, 12 yards, no touchdowns. Added 4 catches for 14 yards. Backfield is pretty pretty hard to get a grip on. Lindsey is the better bet for touches, but he hasn't really been producing and neither has Freeman. Drew Locke next week gets Detroit, so a very burnable defense. I like him as a low-end QB1. Lindsey and Freeman are both going to be slided in as RB3s. Sutton is going to be a wide receiver one next week in a very burnable matchup. Four catches, 79 yards, no touchdowns, and then Fant is going to be a plus as well. He's going to be a low Low end, tight end one, two catches and 56 yards in this one. Now on the Kansas City side, they get Chicago next week. So the guys that you expect are going to be good. The guys you expect to be bad are probably going to be bad next week. Patrick Mahomes, QB1, of course, 340 through the air, two touchdowns, one interception, added three carries for 11 yards. Kelsey, tight end one. This week, he had 11 catches, 142 yards, no touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, five catches, 67 yards, two touchdowns. Also added a run for 10 yards. He's going to be a uh, wide receiver one next week as well. Now, here's the where it gets fun with this Kansas City team. They're expected to get Damian Williams back. They're expected to get Daryl Williams back. So that's two running backs there. Now they have Darwin Thompson, Spencer Ware, and Shady McCoy. So if you're counting with me, that's five. One, two, three, four, five running backs possibly getting a shot at this backfield. So it's a situation to stay away from. I'm going to slide pretty much all those guys in there as boomer bust wide receiver, low end wide receiver threes, just because we don't know who's going to be the lock to get carries. Shady McCoy, six carries. Spencer Ware had two carries with two catches. Thompson had eight carries with one catch. Nobody got over 40 yards, so there's that as well. So maybe Damian Williams slides right in, but your guess is going to be as good as mine next week. Next up, we got a bittersweet moment for Oakland. It was their last game in Oakland. It's definitely not their last home game because they play the Chargers next week in LA, which it's going to be a freaking home game for them because the Chargers never have home field advantage. I freaking hate the Chargers right now. It looked like Minneapolis what, Southwest. They had the skull chant going every time I watched the game. 
So, of course, Oakland's going to get the home field advantage next week in Los Angeles. So it's their last game in Oakland, but not their last home game because that's going to come next week. Jacksonville won this one on a last-minute touchdown, 20-16. to Gardner Minshew, 201 through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions, added five carries for 27 yards. He's going to be a high-end QB, two. They get Atlanta next week. Since the bye week, Atlanta has performed pretty damn well. Uh, we'll get into them here in a little bit when we break down their game this week against San Francisco, but their defense has been pretty good. So expect similar numbers from him uh, next week. So that's why we're going to slide him in as a high end two. Fournette, 15 carries, 42 yards, five catches for 31 yards, no touchdowns on the day. Expect the same numbers from him. He gets, he has those boom games, and then this is pretty much his average. We're going to slide him in as a mid-range two. Keelan Cole led the team in receiving with DJ Chark being out three catches for 76 yards. But the guy to own if DJ Chark is still out next week is Chris Conley, four catches, 49 yards, and two touchdowns. Cole was going to be nothing more than a wide receiver three. And then Conley, if Chark is out, he's going to be a high end two. On the Oakland side, Carr 267 through the air, one touchdown, no interceptions, added one carry for 12 yards, QB two. That's pretty much been him all season. Josh Jacobs, 24 carries, 89 yards, two catches for 20 yards. He's going to be the same as Fournette, a high end two guy because the volume and the work is there. Darren Waller, eight catches, 122 yards. He's going to be a tight end one. And then Tyrell Williams, two catches, 45 yards and a touchdown. He's going to be a wide receiver three next week. Now we'll switch gears on a somber note because we're breaking down the Chargers and you know. I hate them. Chargers lost this one devastatingly, 39-10. to Kirk Cousins, 207 through the air, one touchdown, one interception, added three carries for 14 yards. Uh, he's going to be a low-end one. Uh, Dalvin Cook, nine carries, 27 yards, three catches for 16 yards. He left injured with a shoulder injury. He re-injured his shoulder from last week. If he comes back, he's going to be a one but it looks like possibly Boone uh, just depending on the health of Mattinson is going to be the guy to own Boone had 13 carries for 56 yards and the two touchdowns that Cook should have had on my fantasy team thank you very much I'm gonna lose now because of that so he filled in pretty well for this team if Mattinson comes back I expect Mattinson to be the guy but if Mattinson can't get back from that ankle injury, Boone's going to be the guy. Thielen, three catches for 27 yards, one carry for three yards. I expected this to be like a slow get-in game for him. Next week, I see can see him having a bigger game, so I'm going to slide him in as a wide receiver two. Diggs, uh, four catches, 76 yards, one catch for four yards. I'm going to slide him in as a low end two. Uh, just with Thielen being back, he'll probably get more of the work because this is how it has gone this year where Thielen has got the majority of the work. Now on the Chargers side, Philip Rivers, 307 through the air, one touchdown, three interceptions, and did lose a fumble. He's going to be a low end two, unfortunately. I hate to say that. It's just how... He is this year. Melvin Gordon, seven carries, 28 yards, five catches for 36 yards, and two fumbles. Expect him to bounce back as a high-end two running back. Eckler, seven carries for 19 yards, five catches for 62 yards. Expect him to bounce back next week as well. Uh, I'm going to slide him in as a low-end one. Keenan Allen, the Work is always there. Volume is always there. So he's always going to be a wide receiver one just because of the volume. Today, he had nine catches for 99 yards. Mike Williams, four catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown. He's going to be a high-end three, low-end two. And then Hunter Henry, two catches, 29 yards. He did have a fumble. This team does have to spread the wealth. So he's still going to be a tight end one just because of the position. And he always has the potential to have a big game, especially in the red zone. It's just we were never in the red zone this week. Expect him to have a bigger game next week as well. Now we'll switch from AFC home games to the NFC home games. Tampa Bay went to Detroit and just manhandled them. Tampa Bay won this one 38-17. Jameis Winston, 458 pass yards, four touchdowns, 
and one interception. He's going to be a quarterback one next week. They get Houston. It's a very burnable defense. That defense isn't all that good. Even with his two top pass catchers being out, I still expect him to have a pretty big day next week. Backfield, though, unfortunately, it's definitely a stay away from them. Uh, Neither one of them went over 50 yards. And then either one of them had more than 14 touches. So I'd definitely stay away from Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber. Godwin, five catches for 121 yards before he got injured. It's a hamstring injury, so he might not be ready for next week. But Rashad Perryman stepped in pretty well for Mike Evans. So expect him to just continue that. He had five catches, 113 yards, three touchdowns. I'm going to slide him in as a wide receiver one just because of Godwin and Evans both being out next week. On the Detroit side, David Blau had 260 through the air, no touchdowns, two interceptions, added five carries for 19 yards. He's going to be he's going to be a quarterback number two. Their running back this week, Bo Scarborough, was ruled out, so they pull up a guy off the practice squad who had two short yardage touchdowns, had 10 carries, 21 yards, and two touchdowns. His name is Hills. Expect Bo Scarborough to be back next week, so expect Hills to go right back down to the waiver wire. But also look at carry on Johnson it's his first week of being back eligible from IR so he might be worth a look in fantasy championship games Danny Amendola eight catches 102 yards he's going to be a wide receiver three Galladay three catches 44 yards along with Amendola he's going to be a wide receiver three now we'll head up to the frozen tundra where it was below freezing today, which I'm so glad I was not below freezing today at my house because below freezing is freaking cold. Chicago w- lost this one. They should have won it if their tight end knew how to lateral. They would have at least had a shot to go for two to tie it and then go to overtime. Uh, Chicago lost this one 13 to 24. If their tight end knew how to lateral it, they probably would have won the game because. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't lateral it, but they won this game 13 to 21, or they lost this game 13 to 21. Mitch Trubisky, 334, one touchdown, two interceptions, added four carries for 29 yards. I'm going to slide him in as a QB2. Montgomery, 14 carries, 39 yards, no touchdowns, one catch for 10 yards. He's going to be a RB3, Cohen, 4 for 29 on the ground, 7 for 57. So PPR, he's going to be a low-end 2. Standard-wise, he's going to be a mid-range 3. Allen Robinson's continuing his killer late stretch of the year, 7 catches, 125. We're going to slide him in as a high-end 2. And then Miller is looking like a pretty good streamer. He's had Scored in back-to-back weeks, nine catches, 118 yards, and one touchdown. So we're going to slide him in at a high-end three with boom potential. On the Green Bay side, Rodgers, 203, one touchdown, no interceptions, added three rush attempts for 23 yards. Uh, We're going to slide him in as a low-end one. He gets Minnesota next week, especially for seeding purposes. That game is going to be important. Uh, So expect him to be a low-end one. Aaron Jones, 13 carries, 51 yards, two touchdowns. He's going to be a running back one. Jamal Williams is nothing more than a handcuff. RB4 at this point. And then Devontae Adams, seven catches, 103 yards, and a touchdown. Expect him to have similar numbers and be in the wide receiver one conversation next week. And what was probably his last career game or at least career game in New York. Eli got the win to get back to 500 on his career. Now he is 117 and 117 and he probably saved his Hall of Fame numbers because can you really go into the Hall of Fame with a losing record as a quarterback? Asking for a friend that is but they won this one 36 to 20 against Miami. Ryan Fitzpatrick 279 through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions, added four carries for 33 yards. With those 33 yards, this was an amazing stat. He now leads his team in rushing for the year. There are three quarterbacks in the league that lead their team in rushing. One of these things does not belong. I'll see if you can get it. Lamar Jackson, okay. Kyler Murray, okay. And then Ryan Fitzpatrick. One of these things isn't like the other. 
you, you know what it is, you know, it's, it's the beard. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's just the beard. It's not that, it's not that other thing that you were thinking of. It's, it's the beard and maybe the other thing you were thinking of, but I uh, expect him to be a high end two. And then Parker four catches 72 yards, two touchdowns. Expect him to continue his ways against Cincinnati next week. I'm going to slide him in as a high end two. And then the running back liared or leered or something like that. 12 carries 46 yards. Yeah. Just don't. Why would you even consider that? Yeah, I don't know. Manning, 283 through the air, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Daniel Jones should be back next week, so he's probably off of your streaming radar. Daniel Jones gets Washington next week, so he might be back on your streaming radar. Saquon Barkley, if you made it to the playoffs with Saquon Barkley on your team, congratulations. I mean, just congratulations because he has stunk this year. He today, though, 24 carries, 112 yards, two touchdowns. Washington was just burned by Sanders, so he can have a potential big game, but I'm going to slide him in as a low-end two with boom potential. Uh, Sterling Shepard, nine catches, 111 yards. Golden Tate, one catch, 51 yards, and a touchdown. I'm going to be sliding both those guys as wide receiver threes in the mid to low range section and then Darius Slayton two catches 31 yards and a touchdown if Jones comes back I'm gonna put him as a high end three low end two if Jones comes back next we'll head to that game I just referenced Philly at Washington the score is not going to indicate how it actually was on the field it was a pretty close game Philly just covered on a last minute scored on the last minute touchdown and then they covered as the time ran out touchdown on defense after I don't know what the hell Dwayne Haskins was doing he just threw the ball behind him for no apparent reason Philly won this one 37 to 27 and what was a pretty wild game Carson Wentz 266 through the air three touchdowns no interceptions added three carries for nine yards like I said before Sanders burned this Washington defense 19 carries 122 yards and a touchdown six carries for 50 yards and a touchdown Wentz gets Dallas next week I'm gonna put him as a that's so as a QB low-end QB one high-end QB two next week uh, Sanders with the possibility of Howard coming back I still expect him to get the lion's share of the carries but I do expect him to lose some. So I'm going to throw him in as a mid to low two. Zach Ertz, of course, is going to be a one, even though his year has been up and down. Five catches, 61 yards, and a touchdown this week. And then because their receiving core is just riddled, um, I don't think they have anybody left that started the year. Ward is going to be the guy to own. Especially next week, I can see him having a pretty big week. Uh, seven catches, 61 yards, and the game-winning touchdown. Let's throw him, let's throw him at like low-end two, high-end three receiver class this, for next week. Haskins, like I said, I don't know what the heck he was doing. 261 through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions, but that really weird fumble at the end of the game. Uh, he did add four carries for 26 yards. He's going to be nothing more than a low-end two, high-end QB three. Adrian Peterson, again, is going to be a volume-based RB two. 16 carries, 66 yards, and a touchdown. He added three catches for 25 yards. And then McLaurin, uh, we'll throw him in as a low-end two, high-end three. Today, he had five catches, 130 yards, and a touchdown. He can get in there to that number one wide receiver range but he has Haskins throwing to him who is very hit or miss so just manage your expectations if you have him on your team now we'll head to Carolina where Seattle won this one 32-24 Russell Wilson 286 through the air two touchdowns no interceptions he's going to be obviously a QB one Chris Carson is benefiting from Rashad Penny tearing his ACL. 24 carries, 133 yards, two touchdowns, one catch for four yards. He's going to be solidly in the RB1 category now that Rashad Penny is gone. Tyler Lockett, eight catches, 120 yards, and a touchdown. Throw him in as a wide receiver one. DK Metcalf, two catches, 36 yards, and a touchdown. He's still a threat in the red zone. He's still a threat to go deep. We'll slide him in as a low-end two 
on the Carolina side, Kyle Allen, 277 through the air, one touchdown, three interceptions, added five carries for 25 yards. He's going to be a low-end two guy. Christian McCaffrey, 19 carries, 87 yards, two touchdowns, eight catches for 88 yards. Do I even need it? Duh. Uh, RB1 for this guy. They get Indianapolis next week, but still duh on this guy dj moore eight catches 113 yards no touchdowns added one carry for 10 yards it's going to be a mid-range two curtis samuel is going to be a high-end three low-end two guy five catches 31 yards and a touchdown today with four carries for 23 yards Next, we'll head to Oklahoma Heisman winning first round pick or first overall pick quarterbacks. Yeah, back to back years, same resume, different guy. Cleveland went to Arizona and got the brakes beaten off of them. Mayfield 247 through the air, two touchdowns, one interception, added two carries for 11 yards. He's going to be a QB2. Remember when we said Kareem Hunt was going to be a bad thing for Nick Chubb? Yeah. We all lied to you. It's not a bad thing for him. If not, it's a better thing for him for some reason. I don't know how. Chubb, 17 carries, 127 yards, and a touchdown. He also added three catches for 21 yards. He's going to be a RB1. Kareem Hunt, four carries, 14 yards, eight catches for 62 yards. Uh, We'll slide him in as a low-end RB2. OBJ, eight catches, 66 yards. He's still, unfortunately, a low-end two high end three it's just the season he's developed into Jarvis Landry five catches 23 yards he's going to be more of a mid to low range two guy and then Ricky Seals Jones continued the um trend of Arizona being terrible at guarding tight end because out of nowhere uh, David Njoku was a coach's decision inactive player Seals Jones came in three catches 29 yards and two touchdowns next week Arizona plays Seattle so look for Hollister to be the guy in that rotation hopefully he can continue the trend of Arizona being completely terrible at guarding tight ends on the Arizona side Kyler Murray 212 or 219 through the air one touchdown one interception added eight carries for 56 yards Um, He's going to be a QB2. Kenyon Drake got his first win of this season. Uh, He went 0-6 with the Dolphins, then got traded and went 0-5 up to this point with Arizona. And he finally got a win, and he killed it today. 22 carries, 137 yards on the ground, four rushing touchdowns, and then added one carry for nine yards. That's game-winning days if you played him. I know a couple of the guys. One guy played him. The other guy in my other league uh, did not play him. So, you know, hit or miss guy is going to be hit or miss. You might not play him, unfortunately. Uh, expect him to have a decent day um, against Air, or against Seattle. Um You know, he fits this offense pretty well, better than David Johnson does. So expect him to have a pretty decent day again next week. We're going to slide him in as a mid-range two. Then receiver-wise, you really can't trust anybody. Everybody's kind of up and down. You know, one week it'll be Andy Isabella. One week it'll be Christian Kirk. One week it might be Larry Fitzgerald. So they're all just hit or miss. I'd stay away from all these receivers. Um, Fitz led the team in receiving yards with three catches for 42 yards today. Now we'll head to Jerry World, where Dallas got their first win over a winning team. They beat the Rams 44 to 21. Jared Goff 284, two touchdowns, one interception. Um, He gets San Francisco next week, so I expect him to have a bad week. Uh, They utterly shut this team down last time they played so uh, I'm gonna throw Goff in as a QB2 next week Todd Gurley 11 carries 20 yards one touchdown three catches for 18 yards and a touchdown fortunately we're gonna slide him in you know as, as a low end two guy next week Higby's continuing his dominating run um, they should be getting Everett back next week so probably not gonna get this same volume next week but this week 12 catches, 111 yards, no touchdowns. Uh, We'll slide him in if Everett comes back as a tight end two. If he's not there, a tight end one. 
And then Cooper Cup has just kind of fallen off. Six catches, 41 yards, and the touchdown. We'll slide him. Uh, wide receiver two next next week in San Francisco. Dak Prescott, 212 through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions, added seven carries for 12 yards. Uh, he's the passing yardage leader this year, so we're going to put him as a our, our QB1. Tony Pollard led this team in rushing just because it was such a dominating force that they really didn't have to rely on their starters. Uh, 12 catches or 12 carries, 131 yards, one touchdown, two catches for 12 yards. If Zeke were to go down at practice sometime, Pollard would be the guy to own. Or if for some reason you're in a weird league where your team has a championship game in week 17, um, just know Pollard is the guy to own for um, handcuff purposes. But Zeke, 24 carries. 117 yards, two touchdowns, three catches, 43 yards. Obviously, a RB1. Amari Cooper um, has disappeared since New England. One catch for 19 yards. I have no idea where this guy has gone, but he has fallen off the face of the earth. Um, in recent weeks, if we're going based off of that, he's going to be nothing more than a – you know, a wide receiver three, but since they're getting uh, Philly next week, Philly's defense is terrible, especially on the pass side. They're god awful. Um, we'll slide him in as a mid range two, but I have a feeling that Gallup's going to get all the work, not Cooper. Jason Witten also had a touchdown this week, four catches for 36 yards. He's going to be a tight end two. And the last of the Sunday day games, um, we'll go to the most shocking game of the week. Atlanta won this one. Hey, this is Juju coming at you hot. Rather than having Eris rehash that atrocity of a game that happened in Santa Clara, I'm going to be coming at you with a championship edition of Good Juju. Versus Bad Juju. This is basically just a segment, an opportunity for me to express some players that I could see having some overperformances versus underperformances, some sleepers you may want to target in your championship round. So I'm just going to go down the list, and if I say they have good juju, it implies I expect them to perform over their projections for the coming week. And if I say they have bad juju, then obviously it's my expectation that they will have a underperformance and that underperformances have a tendency to bite you this time of year. So we want to stay away from that. All right, let's get into it. So my first quarterback that I foresee, good juju. That's going to be Andy Dalton. I mean, come on, he's going to Miami this week. Miami has been one of the weakest defenses against fantasy quarterbacks this year. Why should I expect that to change now? Even though Miami has been playing better in recent weeks, that doesn't mean they've done anything to stop opposing quarterbacks. Andy Dalton, he's a competitor. He's going to go out there, give everything he can. They pretty much already locked up the number one overall pick. And if he's going to have a last couple games in Cincinnati, he might actually want to screw over the franchise. So I could expect going out there, have a show you type game against these Dolphins. So give me Andy Dalton as a high upside streamer this week. Another quarterback I like is going to be Drew Locke, the rookie of Denver. So they're going to be playing against Detroit. Now Detroit, they can't stop a nosebleed. This defense has allowed over 25 fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks in at least half of their games. It's going to be in Denver, which the weather can be on the snowy side this weekend from what I'm hearing. But again, this defense is bad. This team has quit. I know they've locked up Matt Patricia for another year, or at least they're saying that they're going to keep Matt Patricia for another year. Either way, it doesn't change the fact that Drew Locke is someone I would like to lock into my lineup. Now let's get into some quarterbacks I have some bad juju for. The first one is going to be Aaron Rodgers. Now, Aaron, he is going to be playing that Mike Zimmer, Minnesota defense. Minnesota just had like seven takeaways like against the Chargers the previous week, and they are still an elite unit. Aaron Rodgers has not been an elite fantasy quarterback. We keep looking at him as that consistent QB1, but the fact of the matter is he hasn't been that at all this year other than some huge performances against Oakland and the Giants, respectively. So with that said, 
I don't want to start him this week. If your opponent wants to make that mistake, let him. But if you have Aaron Rodgers, steer clear. He's going to put up anywhere from 15 to 20 points, which will just not be good enough to get it done for you. Carson Wentz against Dallas. This is another situation where I foresee some bad juju. Now, as far as that goes, Carson Wentz is not done particularly well against the Cowboys. He has a couple games with multiple touchdowns, sure. But overall, his numbers have been lacking. He also has a lot of games in there where he's thrown under 200 passing yards. And I don't like that odds when I consider that in the championship round. Plus, you look at the weapons around him, just Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard are pretty much all they have. I don't think that Greg Ward is exactly a wide receiver one. And he's not someone I want to trust in fantasy football. So I'm going to go ahead and decline on starting Carson Wentz this week. Seek alternative options. Now let's get into some running backs that have some good juju. The first I'm going to mention is going to be Marlon Mack against Carolina. Carolina, they have allowed over double-digit running back performances every week, except week four against Houston, who was still trying to figure out the whole Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson dilemma. With that said, they just cannot stop the run. So Marlon Mack, throw him out there. I know he's coming off a bad week in which he only had 19 rushing yards, but that was against the Saints, that was against New Orleans, and they were getting blown out the entirety of that game. Trust Marlon Mack this week. The Mack is back. Devontae Freeman against Jacksonville. I love this. I think good juju. Jacksonville, they are making career decisions out there, and their career doesn't involve them staying in Jacksonville. These players have quit. They don't want to tackle anyone. And the fact that they won in Oakland, I think is more of an indictment on Oakland than it is props for Doug Marone and this Jacksonville squad. So with that said, roll him out there. I think he might have his best fantasy day of the season. Player now, I think, has some bad juju, and this kind of a changeup from what I thought a couple weeks ago. It's going to be Derrick Henry. The reason I don't love Derrick Henry in this matchup, so the Saints, they're pretty good at stopping the run, and Derrick Henry is coming into this matchup with a hammy. Now, hammies are very limiting, and if this turns into track meet with the Saints offense pushing the ball down the field, I don't think a power back is exactly who you want to put your faith in. So I am going to decline starting Derrick Henry this week. If you do have to throw him out there, expect him to be more on the lower end running back two threshold. He's not going to put up huge day, but I mean, if he's all you have, then that. That is what it is. However, if you do have options on your bench, I probably lean them over Henry this week. The Minnesota running backs. You have three names that are game thrown around here. Dalvin Cook, Amir Abdullah, and Mike Boone. Dalvin Cook, the only reason his questionability as a starter is going to be, well, he has that shoulder injury. And even if he does play, it is going to be in limited reps, I think is important to understand. So with that said, this entire backfield has some bad juju. I would steer clear of all these guys. I don't think that you can trust anyone in particular over the other. Even if we do get an early rolling that Dalvin Cook is out, you're telling me I'm going to have to start Amir Abdul in championship week against a Packers defense that, yes, is bad against the run, but are they bad enough that I think Amir Abdul is just going to tear them up? Probably not. Stay clear of the Minnesota running back situation. All right, on wide receivers. A wide receiver, I think, has some good juju. Amari Cooper against Philadelphia. I am old enough to remember Amari Cooper putting up almost 50 points against me in last year's fantasy football playoffs. Well, he gets to play the Philadelphia Eagles again, and this time, they're even worse. I mean, this Philly secondary gave up a ton of points to Darius Slayton and the corpse of Eli Manning two weeks ago. And even Dwayne Haskins wasn't awful against them. So I'm loving starring Amari Cooper in this one, even if he is coming a little banged up. I think this is his opportunity to have another huge Amari day. Expect him to be a locked and loaded wide receiver one. Don't even question starring him this week. Another wide receiver I love this week has some good juju. John Ross the third. Now, when it comes to John Ross, he is 13% owned. Andy Dalton, who I mentioned is a player that has some good juju, is already a player I'm streaming right now. Well, Andy Dalton has to throw it to someone, and John Ross always has touchdown upside when he's on the field. Even has big play upside as a speed guy. Again, Miami, a defense he can beat. I might take a risk. I might start John Ross over some of the other guys I'm going to list below. Now, some players that have some bad juju at the wide receiver position. 
Tyreek Hill. Now, I know what you're saying. Like, can I really bench Tyreek Hill? Well, any other week, he's a wide receiver one. But this week against Chicago on the road, I have him as a low-end wide receiver two, maybe even more of a flex option, which is tough for his skill set, but it is going to be an underperformance, which means you're still putting him in your starting lineup, but I'm not expecting him to carry your team. At the end of the day, the Bears secondary is still good. This defense is still good. The only thing that's going to potentially hurt them is going to be Mitch Trubisky. So with that said, Tyree Kill, he's just going to have a below value day, which is going to be a disappointment in week 16. Another player that's got some bad juju. is going to be my brother in name, Julian Edelman. Now, Jules... He's been killing it this year. He's been pretty much a wide receiver one for the majority of the year. However, he's basically being held together by super glue, tape, duct tape, whatever you can to piece him together right now. He has ribs, knees, shoulder, head, knees, and toes at this point. The guy is very limited, and the Bills secondary is a young, very athletic group. This defense is no joke. I'd be very scared to put Julian Edelman in my starting lineup. I would probably veer towards benching him this week. Now, just some quick tidbits here. Nothing too big at the tight end and DST positions. Good juju? (music) Jacob Hollister. I mean, he's playing Arizona. We all know how bad the Arizona defense is against opposing tight ends. Historically bad against opposing tight ends. So if you have Jacob Hollister, you're playing him. OJ Howard, now that's going to be the big one. Mike Evans is out with that hammy. Chris Godwin is questionable. Do you really think Brashad Perriman is going to take up the majority of the target share? I don't think so. Brashad Perriman's been mostly a bust in his NFL career, and I don't expect him to suddenly be a wide receiver one going into week 16. So with that said, OJ Howard, who is a big target, has worked with Jameis Winston for plenty of years, and Bruce Arians liked at some point during this year, I could see being a huge upside play against Houston this week who has a bit of a middle-of-the-road defense against the tight end position. So I'll like some OJ with my breakfast Sunday morning. Now, a player that I think has some bad juju is going to be Greg Olson. There wasn't too much. I mean, there's a lot of players that could really dock at the tight end position. But the reason I'm going to throw Greg Olson here is just because he's a big name. He's coming off a concussion this week. So logic says start him. Well, here's my thing. Greg Olson hasn't really been dominant in quite a few years. He's missed plenty of time over the last few years with injury. Do I think he's going to have a big return game? Probably not. Maybe three to four targets. Is three to four targets going to be good enough to carry your team? I guess not. So I'm going to say he has some major bad juju. Finally, let's get into DSTs because I'm not going to waste time mentioning kickers. A DST that I think has some good juju it's going to be Kansas City. I mean, Mitch Trubisky, I mean, he reverted back into pumpkin last week. The Packers were able to expose him for what he is. And why should that change in another tough game against the Kansas City Chiefs, who have some decent pass rushers? I'm going to say that the Bears offense doesn't stand a chance against this Chiefs defense. In fact, could see a couple big plays happening. So yeah, Chiefs, some good juju on their side. <music> on the opposite of anything, some DSTs I could foresee having some bad juju. Well, let's talk about New England and Seattle. The reason I mentioned both these teams is they're both playing two young quarterbacks who don't make a ton of mistakes with the ball. And depending on your league format, if you can't take advantage of those big plays, then you might not be able to capitalize quite as well at the DST position. So I'm going to mark them as some bad juju, mostly because I don't see them being able to get enough points to be a difference maker in your matchup. All right, guys, that does it for me. Let's get back to Eris to grace your night with some more good juju all right so for sunday night the bills ended up pulling this one off 17 to 10 josh allen 139 through the air one touchdown one interception he also added seven carries for 28 yards and a touchdown he's going to be a low end one high end two qb yeah that's about the range i'd put him Devin Singletary, 21 carries, 87 yards, no touchdowns. Frank Gore, 10 carries for 15 yards with no touchdowns. Uh, Does look like John Brown had seven carries for 99 yards. That's about the only really guys you can really trust. Cole Beasley is super up and down today. He only had one catch for six yards. On the Steelers side, Devlin Ducky Hodges. 202 through the air, one touchdown, four interceptions, though, on an undrafted rookie. He's going to have hiccups, especially against a really stout defense in Buffalo. 
I'd still put him in as a mid-range two guy. James Conner did look like he was on a pitch count. He had eight carries for 42 yards with no touchdowns, but he did catch four passes for nine yards and scored a touchdown. Um, so expect him to have a pretty, you know, a decent week. You know, what he's expected to have next week for you. James Washington, five catches for 83 yards. Deontay Johnson, five catches for 62 yards. So Connor will throw him in as a low end two, especially if they continue this rotation. And then James Washington and Deontay Johnson will both throw those guys as mid twos to mid threes. So we'll go ahead and step into the waiver wire for championship weekend. Pretty straightforward. I had just have a couple guys for you. Jacoby Brissett from Indianapolis. He has a pretty decent matchup next week. He does have the Panthers. It's a decent defense. Um, he's also really the only quarterback widely available that has a decent matchup. Everybody else has a pretty bit tougher matchup or is not readily available for most leagues. On the running back side, look at Carrion Johnson for Detroit. Um, this one's going to be a bit weird because he might be on a pitch count. He might not even be back next week, so he might be burning a waiver wire. But it's the last week of the year, so you might throw him in as your you know, second or third, maybe even fourth waiver target. You might even be able to get him for $0 if you're in a fab league. Running back-wise, again, you have Mike Boone or Alexander Mattinson for Minnesota. Pick them up. Just watch all of your – practice logs for the Minnesota running backs and then Adrian Peterson again volumes there he's pretty available in most leagues so there's that as well on the receiver side we have Miller from Chicago he's been stepping up his game he's been pretty been pretty reliable the last couple weeks Chris Conley is another guy especially if DJ Chark is out next week Bashad Perryman for Tampa Bay if well Mike Evans is already out and then now it's looking like Chris Godwin might be out next week as well. Fire him up. He's probably going to be the number one waiver target of the week. And then Ward from Philadelphia again. He's going to be their only healthy wide receiver that looks like he can actually catch the ball because everybody else can't catch the ball on that damn team. John New Smith from Tennessee. They're using him in the run game and the passing game. Tannehill has actually been a really good quarterback uh, since coming in for Marcus Mariota. So, you know, decent target share for him as well. And then Jacob Hollister for Seattle, just because he's playing Arizona and Arizona is God awful. And when I say this, I mean, Ross Dwelly came in for George Kittle, two touchdowns. Ricky Seals Jones came in for Njoku, two touchdowns. George Kittle on a broken ankle had a hundred yards and a touchdown against them. So they are just terrible against uh, the tight end position. So those are going to be my waiver wire targets for next week. So look for those guys. We'll see you again next week. That's it for the show. Let me just do our, you know, we're on Instagram, slump buster podcast, Twitter, slump buster pod and slump buster FFB. Again, slump buster FFB every Sunday morning. We're answering your guys' lineup questions. We also have the website, the slumpbuster.com where we have our rankings, uh, power rankings, weekly position rankings, and we also have articles on there. So get, check all that stuff out. Now, you guys do need to remember there are three Saturday games, so you need to have your way, your lineup set on Saturday morning. Some of you guys might forget. If you're still with me here on this podcast, don't forget to set your lineup for the Saturday games. Other than that, we're on all major streaming platforms, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Like, share, download, rinse, repeat, comment, review, tell your friends about us, all that good stuff. Remember, talk shit to your fantasy people because why are you in fantasy if you're not talking shit? Otherwise, I'll see you guys championship weekend, and that'll be it for me. Later, guys.